are such an asshole. Okay, today's video is brought to you by two books germane to the topic of this video. One, the book of numbers, analyze and ROI of the pursuit of women. And then also bachelor pad economics, the financial advice Bible for men. Link to both of those <clears throat> down below. So if you wanted to expand on the topics we're going to be talking here without having to sit and listen to the whole darn thing, go get those books. Uh, does he want to be kept? I will keep you anonymous. Hey, Cappy, quick background on me. 35 years old, single. Height is sore between 5'10 and 5'11. I'm 175 pounds. Not a chad, but not a bad looking guy either. Child free, vasectomy. I live in a state. Corporate job making 80000 a year. That's pretty good for that state, actually. 100% remote with extremely laid back boss. Corporation I work for pushing liberal agenda strongly. I don't, I obviously don't drink the Kool Aid. I work approximately 10 hours per week at paid for 40. Paid off home valued at approximately 300000 It's uh, that's a, that's a bit larger than my home on a half acre lot. It's the home I grew up in as a child. Much of it sits empty due to my somewhat minimalist mentality. Paid off truck, valued at approximately $20,000. $51,000 on IRA, but just started saving again. I'm putting 50% of my gross pay in my workplace 401k. I get a 6% corporate match that I'll be fully vested in after two more years. I save 5% of my gross income for my next vehicle to ensure I'll never go into debt for anything again. Hopefully, approximately 13000 emergency savings fund. After all the following are paid, taxes, health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, retirement investments, next vehicle, and all my monthly bills, food, gas, and miscellaneous, I, have, I end up having approximately 500 left over every two weeks. My problems in life. All right, hang on. Let me clear my throat because this is long. All right. My problems in life, I'm bored to death. I don't have any hobbies or anything I truly enjoy. I don't have ma very many friends, and the ones I do have are married with children. Only family I have left are my maternal grandmother, my mom, and my dog. Very close to them, and the reality is, based on their health, I may lose all of them within the next five years, which would put me at 40 years old with no family, no woman, no kids, no pets, and very likely a millionaire. I'm set up to inherit some of the money from my grandma and my mom. Any suggestions on what I should be doing now with my extra time and money would be interested in hearing what you charge for your thoughts on a video response. Thanks. All right. Now in the olden time, in the olden days, in the before time, what men had was called family. And not that I'm going Dennis Pregarian on you, but um, this is a big problem, mental problem. All men who have their financial act together, keep the nose clean, don't accidentally impregnate some girl, and aren't completely absorbed and uh, uh, um, uh, not obsessed. Your faculties, your mental faculty, all your reasons, isn't uh, consumed by dealing with mistakes of the past. Okay. And and the reason why is you're, <clears throat> you're above certain parts of Maslow's hierarchy. Needs. The people who majored in dumb crap didn't save up money or begging for a student loan ballot as a 35 year old millennial, um, had kids, got divorced, had kids out of wedlock. Finding, they never get to this lofty question, this position like, God, I, I did everything right now. What? Okay. So in that sense, it's a blessing. They never come up for air. They're just living paycheck to paycheck and they hope to God Biden pass it or extends the, the rent moratorium. You're like, that's their world. So they never, they, they never get to this altitude, this uh, uh, elevation you're flying at. So they're not part of the problem. But there is a contingent of you guys out there and gals, but mostly guys. You play your cards right. You kept your nose clean. You majored in the right thing. Uh, you just made the right choices. And in time, not not in short time, but not in long time other, uh, either. But you're all of a sudden in your younger 30s. You got money, you got stability, you got uh, a house, you got a career, you, you just don't have a wife and kids. And usually by this time, that's when they would, they would come. So <clears throat> the first thing, even though you haven't addressed it, is that there's going to be this angst like, what do I do? What do I do? And that is all of human history, all of human genetics, because you're alive, so a, a a chain of human procreation resulted there's a long and established track record of genetic 
uh, an evolution pounding into your psyche like you should be doing something that something is you should be having kids. You should be having a family. Unfortunately, past 50 years, that has become an untenable position for many people. It's been completely not acceptable. Um, and, and of the many risks that come involved with having kids in today's society and how we're going to all go to a Marxist and we love the state more than we love our fellow neighbor, uh, right off the bat, it is absolutely not an acceptable proposition to get married for any Western man. I'm not trying to be edgy. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to ooh, get those clicks. No, it's a fact. Again, read the book of numbers, the topic of divorce. <clears throat> it is simply a, a, a non-starter. It is too risky to get married, and it is too risky to add the additional risk to have children on top of that. Also, as you may have noticed, not a lot of marriageable women get the book of numbers. It measures the percent of the female population that's marriageable between 18 and 35, because that's all men are really interested in engaging in. Uh, there, this, not only do you have the legal risk of marriage, the legal risk of children, the socio-political risk of a, a declining Marxist uh, economy, culture, society. <laughs> uh, it, oh, where was I? Oh, <clears throat> There just isn't a supply of marriageable women. You know how many times I got to say this. Women are not programmed or trained or even introduced to the concept to be wives and mothers. They'll get married. They want to get married. They want to have kids. The hell if they're going to be a wife or a mother. And, and, and in fairness, men have not been trained to be husbands or fathers either. You've just been trained to be doormats. <clears throat> you are an exception. And there are millions of men, not a lot, because out of 300 million people, a couple million men, it's not a lot. But there are millions of men, young men, not so young men, who do have their financial act together, who are real men, who would make great husbands and fathers. But I'm sorry, sir. Watching my video before. Marriage and children just aren't on the menu. That's not all you're asking me. Okay. What do I do? I'm bored to death. Well, normally you'd get married and have kids. And I'm not saying that's not a possibility. I mean, there's a possibility I win the lottery. There's a possibility Ava Mendez knocks on my door, heels and thighs, knock, knock, knock. Hi, Aaron. I'm here to sexually satisfy you in every way. Well, welcome, Ava. Come on in. How are you? Good to see you. Want a soda water? Did you want to go for a motorcycle ride? No, let's just get to the screwing. Okay. You know, there's a chance. Chances aren't that good. <clears throat> and I really want get this, get this book. Because men are mathematical. I, this main reason I wrote this book is, is like we could talk about it in anecdotes and all that. I put numbers to this. I had an actuary go through it. It's bad, and you need to have the numbers associated with it so you understand, like, oh, wow, it's pretty bad. One, so you don't get your hopes up. Uh, uh, two, so you don't waste your time. And three, that you realize, oh, okay, now I better move on to other things. <laughs> But to address this, this oh, man, I'm bored on how I should be doing. Yeah, that's your genetics kicking in like, oh, where's the kids coming? Sorry, little buddy. Sorry, little stick and, and cojones ain't going to happen or it's very unlikely to happen. And so now you're what normally gave not just men, but women as well, purpose, agency and reason in life was family, family. So here is my problems in life. I'm bored to death. I don't have any hives or anything I truly enjoy. I don't have many friends. All right, let's talk about that because that's another problem. <clears throat> uh, just as most young women in Western world, Western society have been conditioned not to be wives and mothers. Most of your friends, most people, male, female, doesn't matter. Most of your friends have been conditioned to basically die. Like commit suicide? No, I don't mean commit suicide. Just die. They're still alive but they might as well not be because they don't live. They go into debt. They get married to someone they're kind of, eh, how about? They have kids. They don't really raise the kids. Kids have problems. Now you got to go to psychologists, a therapist, run the activities because you don't want to actually raise your 10, spend time with your kids. People get tired. They stay out of physical shape. They, they don't try new things. They stagnate. They, they, die a spiritual death to the point they really might as well be NPCs. 
which does not improve your situation, does not improve the rich multimillionaire or simple millionaire or just simply successful, productive, <clears throat> accomplished bachelor. Because you're not very unlike, I can't say you're not. It is very unlikely you're going to find a quality woman, have a happy marriage. I can say it with accuracy, very low chances, and have children and, and be some kind of happy patriarch. <clears throat> so that uh, birthright has been taken away. But by God, there you think, well, then at least I got my friends. No, you don't. You got your friends maybe up until about 30, and then they just start falling away like Messerschmitts in 1944 above the air Europe. They just start falling away. And it's really tragic and, and it's really torturing because you'll look, you'll see them. Maybe every once in a while you get a beer with them. Maybe every once in a while you see them like, hey, look at it. And then you won't see them again for another two, three months, even though they're like three blocks away. Will you do anything really fun? Like, oh, I had a grand time. I was very fortunate to have Sergeant Greg, the great one, <clears throat> and uh, another buddy of mine all meet in Moab. We went hiking last year. That was a great time, but that was the exception, not the rule. Right? So not only have you lost your uh, birthright of family, <clears throat> you don't even get your consolation prize of good friends. And so things are really getting the key things, the two main, do you want fish? Not fish. What are the two main things? Of uh, steak or lobster? You want surf or turf? Those are both off the menu. So now all that's left on the menu of life are things that are outside of other people. Now, I'm not saying you don't try and fall in love. I'm not saying you don't try and find good people. I'm not saying you don't try to be social. I'm just saying it's an uphill battle. And your chances are very low. And so what you have to do is choose from the menu of life of other things to give yourself point, purpose, reason, and agency. All right. <clears throat> now, sometimes you might be lucky, like me. I got nieces and a couple nephews. And they're going to be great until about 11 or 12 when they'll become tweens and then they'll be stuck on their notepad. But, you know, it's for the here and now. I've also mentioned before traveling. If you have not traveled extensively, that's going to give you about 10 years of uh, mental stimulation, purpose, and agency. But otherwise, yeah, man, this is the hardest struggle successful rich bachelors are going to face. Just bachelors that have their act together is finding out what the F to do with your time. And it, it is like, oh, God, you know, another day by myself. <laughs> it's just another day. And it's great because I'll tell you this, me by myself, I can accomplish so much and get so much done. Would I like to have some people in tow? Sure. Would I like to have a hot gal? Like, and I'm lucky enough to have a girlfriend in that regard. But outside of that, you need to fill your life with things and accomplish not not material things, accomplishments, um, experiences. Not to sound like a millennial, you cannot sit and die on the vine. You cannot stay home. You need to get up. And there are times, man, where it's just like, you know, like yeah, I'll just grab a big bottle of Rumplemints and I'll sit there and hammer it down, and I'll go look at my pond. I'll go watch some World War II movies, and actually, you know. That's fine a day or here, you know, twice a year or something. But that becomes way too much a, uh, uh, what's it called, a uh, habit. You need to go out and do something. <clears throat> so your family, blah, 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 blah. You don't have any hobbies. So unfortunately, that's the answer. You're going to have to have some hobbies. And, and I mean a very all-encompassing term of hobbies. Right. Once I kind of have my house stabilized and put the French drain in and all these other things, I'm going to join a boxing gym. Okay. Why? Because I want to box. Well, yeah, but more I want to go hang out with a bunch of real guys. Okay. I go to the cigar lounge. Do I really like cigars? Not really. I'm going to switch to pipes pretty soon, but I go there because it's the same staff and the people. <laughs> um, I may join like the Eagles or something or the, International Order of Odd Fellows, some kind of fraternal. Why? Because I believe in their rituals and all that. No, because I want to go talk to people. Right. But absent of that, what do I do? Motorcycle ride, fossil hunt, shoot guns. I'm going to get into fishing again. I'm going to get a kayak and start kayaking all the various rivers they got out here. I travel. I visit friends when I travel. I mean, most of my traveling, I just go to visit the friends. 
but I keep my brain occupied. And when I'm not doing that, I'm running errands, I'm listening to podcasts. What kind of podcasts? The latest gossip about uh, Cardi B or Vicky Minaj? No, I'm listening. Uh, one is called Weltgeist. W-E-L-T Geist, G-E-I-S-T, Weltgeist. And the, it's great. He does uh, often Schopenhauer. I had no idea how, how awesome Schopenhauer was because he's exactly like me. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, you are smart. Or so I'd like to think. And when you're young and you haven't experienced it, especially if you came from lower middle income or poor, <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's all like, oh, wow, I'm going to Glacier National. Look at the mountains. Oh, I'm going to ride out to Alaska. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, it's grow Vegas. I've never been to Vegas again. But there's, there's at least a decade of stuff to do. But then you're going to be like, oh, okay. At the airport again, huh? Yeah, I used to remember when flying was awesome and unique. Oh, uh, fly again, huh? Oh, sushi. All right. Yeah, I guess so. We'll go there. Um, and all things in life, all of them, the novelty wears off. And then it's your job to force yourself to get up in the morning and go find a new hobby and do it. And it's... And you think, well, how hard is it to, yeah, you go do it for 15 years. You have total freedom. You, oh, you bachelor's mark. Oh, Cappy, how hard is it for you to golf? Da, da, da. It's not hard to golf. It's fun to golf. But do it for 15 years. Not necessarily golf, but have a total luxurious family uh, free life and a child wife absent life, which is what an increasing number of bachelors and bachelorettes, by the way, <clears throat> Tommy Lauren <laughs> are going to face you have it becomes a chore what am I going to do now? and you'll really know you're there when chores like it's a chore to get up okay and figure out what you're going to do that day you'll really know you've hit it where you no longer discern between things that are normally fun and things that are actual work or a chore for example, the French drain. You know, a French drain, <clears throat> um, there's a slight slope in my property that goes past my house into the pond. Well, I don't want that water flowing off there, going into my basement. So I got to divert it around my house. And the, the thing they do, they go, it's called a French drain. So I looked up on the internet and all that. I'm actually looking forward to going to Lowe's or the homie de Pot or Menards and digging a trench. Like yesterday I dug trenches in my my uh kind of on my driveway to keep water from flowing into the driveway and further eroding it. Um yeah, it was laborious. Yeah, it was taxing, but it was like, "Oh, I I got something to do. It's a project." So instead of being a childlike kid where it's like, "Let's go to Disneyland." Da, 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 I don't want to read about the Civil War. You will have reached this Zen or Nirvana. I, I hate to paint it with a positive term. But this indifference, that's more accurate. This indifference between work and play, where it all just becomes activity. And it's like, I'm going to go for a motorcycle ride today. I'm going to go down south through Custer, come up. I might go through Nemo. I haven't been in a Nemo in a while. <clears throat> and it's like, oh, that's as intellectually stimulating as me going and digging a trench in the dirt and laying down pipe. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, but I mean in a landscaping sense. And then, and then guess what? Gee, brain, what are we going to do today? Same thing we do every night, Picky. Try to figure out what the F to do. And then you're going to do it again and again and again. And what would normally have been there would have been a child dad question about life X. And you being somewhat of a reasonably accomplished seasoned man, 32, 33, like, oh, son, well, that's how you fix a bike tire. Oh, look at, so oh, what is my son doing? What's my daughter doing today? <clears throat> Give dad a hug. Hey, wife, how you doing? I see you're not wearing panties. That's great. All right. Hey, kids, go play in the yard. Yo, know, that that that's what life should have been. But marriage oppressive. How dare you expect me to wear crotchless lingerie? Uh, I'm not putting on heels. Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I, we all got the message loud. We got it. We got it. Bet you June Cleaver wore crotchless panties for what? You didn't know that when you were watching uh, Leave It to Be All, oh, Beaver and Wally got in some kind of trouble. You didn't see her about Ward and, and June. June had crotchless panties. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
That was the fun. No, no, that's it just. <laughs> and honestly, I, I think I got it here. Hang on, let me look it up. The table of contents. <clears throat> was it two or three percent? The percent of women that are marriageable. Okay, so I got to go up to page 66. I'll just give it to you. I mean, 66. The final number for the percent of women who are marriageable. Take the three estimates from the three methods, the deal breaker method, 1.25, the online dating profile survey method, 5.4, and the dates per marriage method, 1.5. We get a simple average of 2.72% or one in every 37 American women do not have a major deal breaker. This 2.72% is the first of the three variables we will need to calculate the percent chance you'll be happily married, a.k.a. what you're going to get. And I even believe that 3% is very high because I did not factor in at all, at all personality because I don't, you can't quantify personality or chemistry. So it's bad. It's really bad. And this now condemns you, especially in <clears throat> in combination with the fact that most people are dead. You're already dead, Blythe. Fire your weapon, Blythe. All right. The fact that most of your friends, if not dead already, are going to soon be dead spiritually. Yeah. Long life ahead of you as a bachelor. And so <clears throat> the one thing that you do have especially if you're a bachelor you kept your finances. Yeah, I'm not saying you got to be a millionaire, right? But there is there is a wave of very well-to-do bachelors, confirmed bachelors, whether they wanted to be bachelors or not, whether you chose to be or society forced you to be. There is a wave of bachelors who are going to be very well-to-do off, both in terms of time and money. And the question is, what do you do? I say you take your money and you go have fun with it. Uh, another hobby I'm going to get into is ultralight uh, power power paragliding. <clears throat> That's uh, I saw. I remember I always wanted to do that, and I was riding my bike back from Sturgis. I saw three of them fly. I'm like, that I, I got to do that. I forgot. And now that I'm in a place where there's a lot of open land and not a lot of trees and telephone wires, I can do that. Uh, but I got to do that that power paragliding, right? Um, which actually is not that expensive. Um, I, I got my motorcycle. I'm going to go ride around. I'm going to get into boxing. And then after I get tired of that, I don't know how, how long I'm going to get excited about getting punched in the face, but uh, I'm going to find something else to do. I got to go tra travel the world, find a plan B. That's, that, that's a chore. That's a project. I don't want to do it. I would like to just travel and enjoy it. I would like to have it where I can be guaranteed that my property rights are protected, that the government isn't going to just take all my shit. Because a bunch of brainwashed Marxist dopes from the K through 12 system believe, hey, I, you got more than me, and because reasons, I'm entitled to it. I could invest in the country, like, oh, hey, I'll, maybe I would get a family. No. Where you come from, it's gone. Where you thought you were going to, weren't never there. And where you are ain't no good unless you can get away from it. <clears throat> Greatest quote of all time. And so you got you got lots of projects. If you're wondering what to do with your time, reconnoiter the United States. Go get reconnaissance, man, if you want. More importantly, reconnoiter outside the United States. Find yourself a plan B. Get yourself in physical. You don't have hobbies. I'm going to give you some. <clears throat> get yourself in physical shape. All right. Learn to ride motorcycle. Get into a martial arts. Um, these are kind of your basic ones. Maybe start a side business, something like that. But beyond these kind of things that serve an ulterior purpose, I don't know, man, you're you. You got to figure out what you want to do. And what's great about life is, okay, lobster and steak are off the menu. Right, those are gone. No wife, no kids, no friends. Right, what's your what's your plan C, essentially? Well, there's a lot. Power paragliding, hiking, canoeing, kayaking, chess, Woodworking, um, fishing, ballroom dancing, uh, music production, authoring, writing, ceramics, blowing glass. The entire menu of the world is available to you. And because you kept your nose clean and played your cards right, you got the money to pretty much avail yourself of all of them. All right? 
The only next step up would you'd have to have like Bezos money. Well, I'm going to fly to the to, to space. I'm going to get a yacht and sail around the world, uh, which actually you don't need to be multimillionaire to do that. Um, I want my own personal MiG-15. Uh, now we're talking egregiously rich people, but aside from those extremely unaffordable things, 99.99% of everything is available to you. And the major chore you got to do is figure out which ones you want to do. That's that's your cardinal. That's your primary chore. The chore to determine all other chores. And it is a chore. But thankfully, for you and a couple other million hardworking, I wouldn't say lucky, I would say hardworking bachelors. Maybe bachelorettes. I don't care <laughs> what you girls think or want. Uh, the The benefit of you playing your cards right and working hard. You can now afford these things. Maybe there's girl along. Maybe in your power paragliding club, there's a cool gal. And she's marriage material, white material, and just wants to have kids. And oh my goodness. And they're bad. Sure, sure. And maybe there's some crazy cool guys that want to hang out and do fun things and live. Like, might happen. Not likely. Not likely. So there you go. That's what you do. <clears throat> Jesus, we got a hundred dollar super chat. All right, B Rain Wash one hundred dollars. Thanks, B Rain. Thank you a lot. Uh, you've been kicking ass all week. Here's some towards an Asian massage. To there ain't no Asians in South Dakota. Oh, there is. There's some Vietnamese place. I just had it over there. There's some. Um, I don't think there's the classic Asian part. There is an Asian parlor in Casper, Wyoming, though. You drive on the outskirts. I don't know if it's there anymore. You're like, what the hell is that doing there? Um, here's something towards an Asian massage parlor to relax your muscles from all that manual labor on your property. Cheers. Actually the hundred dollars, I, I don't know what gravel costs are. Cause I gotta go, I gotta go out and measure how much length I need. <clears throat> and I gotta do the math. I might have to take multiple truck trips, but thank you very much. That will go to gravel. Cause I'm thinking I'm just going to buy a lot of gravel. The plastic tubing isn't that expensive, but the gravel is, but thank you very much. Uh, be your aim. Uh, D digital five bucks. All right. Curse of the high IQ. And enjoy the decline. I appreciate your contribution. Kevin. Well, thanks D digital. I appreciate it. Focus on you. Oh, that is an awesome shirt. That is an awesome shirt. Garrett Fox. I think Garrett, you're new, right? Five bucks. Cheers. Cappy out here every day, actually saving young men's lives. I'm, I'm not out. That's the th I would like to be out. Here's another thing about hobbies and work where it's like, if you do enough podcasts, you'll be like, God, I got to get the fuck outside and I got to get out of here. The sun. Oh my God, it exists. Um, Amtax One Gaming and Crypto Mining, 10 British pounds. This is ass kissery, but I've learned loads from your books and videos. A small token of thanks changed the way I think and the way I brought up my son, along with Rollo Rich <clears throat> and all the red pill stuff. Well, thanks, Amtax. I'm glad, um, glad you, that it helped out with your son and uh, glad we made your life better. Who's this guy? <laughs> hey chad you want a podcast later tonight we'll do the older brother podcast i want to hear your uh, economic efficiency loss of the day uh, boo -boo -doo -boo -doo. clem joke 10 to, uh, generous dollars about your degree auction you might want to start a new movement in the 60s young men burned the draft cards following your lead millennials will auction their own degrees yeah but okay L not to sound too arrogant i'm somewhat of a micro internet celebrity you know, like there's a market for me. Tanner McFeelerson auctioning off his social science degree. There's not really a market for it. And then you'd flood the market with degrees. And now let's also be clear here, Clem. <clears throat> How many of those degrees are from the Carlson School of Mansion? I just want to know that, huh? I mean, this is the Harvard of the Midwest. This is the Harvard of Hennepin County. I mean, it is known far and wide, a 10 mile radius around it. And once you get to Ramsey, people are like, what school? Huh? And we get to Wisconsin and they're like, what? What's that school? What? Huh? But in, in the 10 mile radius around the Carlson School of Management, you could poll people. You know what? Five, six percent of the people might have heard of that college. A whole five, six <clears> percent. <throat> and so um, that's where. The value, that's why I'm going to get big bucks when I auction off my, my college degree. Because I, I will, because it go, it's the Carlson School of Management. 
that's that's where the money is. Uh, Fred again for two bucks. Why do redheads with big boobs like Vlad more than Cap? What redheads with big boobs are chasing after Vlad? He had a redhead with small boobs and she was a psychopath. Still is. How's the misery, sweetheart? How's being poor, a strong, independent woman, daddy bail you out with daddy money? Strong, independent woman. I don't know. Red, uh, Chad, did you ever sleep with a redhead with big boobs? That's one combination I could never, could never, I got redheads, I got big boobs, never, never at the same time. <clears throat> Fred Freeman, solid two bucks. Can Vlad podcast with you from a cigar lounge on Dearborn? Um, maybe, I don't know, was, will his phone allow for it? Uh, the cute gal voted socialist. And just ask me for money. Ha <laughs> ha, Fred, send me the screenshot of that. Do girls really ask you guys for money? Really? I, I, does that happen? <sighs> Chad, $2. That was awesome that time we went to the dump. Wasn't it a good time? Elkins came out here and I had a bunch of. Uh, cardboard I had to get rid of because of all the furniture and deliveries and they, they got a dump north of town <clears throat> and you, you weigh in and weigh out and you pay a, a token fee. And uh, yeah, I took them to the dump, Rapid City Dump. Those are good times. Those are good times. Fred again, two bucks. Can Vlad podcast? Oh yeah, we already did that one. Are we caught up? We're caught up. There you go. All right. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. I'll see you guys later. Toodles.